Hi friends, so welcome to EduTab. So welcome to the fast track series for NABAD grade A 2018 brought to you by EduTab. Now this is a series where we shall pick important data points and concepts that need to be kept in mind before going to the examination. Today is a lecture 2 and we shall be discussing it very briefly. So the NABAD grade A admit cards are out so kindly download them. We know that the prelims now friends, uh, we have come up with one course, a new course that is, okay, so let us have a look at the first thing that we are seeing today. So it is going to be the various terms associated with the crops, right? So you can see here a snapshot. So if you talk about curing, it is related to tobacco and tea, right? When I say stripping, it is related to jute. With jute, there is one another term that is very famous that is retting. Okay, so kindly keep that in mind. Then we have nipping. It is common for gram plants and cotton, right? Then we have wrapping for sugarcane. Then there is one other term called propping. Now this propping term is applicable for sugarcane too plus banana, okay? Then we have trashing. Trashing is again applicable to sugarcane. Right. So kindly make the no changes that I've told you or the additions that I've told you rather like retting can be associated with jute and propping can be associated with both sugarcane and banana. In exam, there can be a question like, for example, uh, nipping is related to uh, which of the following crops. So you can get an option gram or cotton. Right. So if uh, if you find these two uh, options there in the paper, obviously that is going to be the correct answer for you. Now let us just quickly have a look at the meaning of it. So when I say curing, I mean removing moisture from the leaves. Okay, so basically it is nothing but the removal of moisture. Okay, so this is practiced both in tobacco as well as the tea plants. We are not going to go very deep into it. Next comes retting. So uh, basically when you see the jute plants, the stem, okay, the stem of the plant gives us the fiber. Okay, so what happens is we need to extract the fiber from that particular stem. So first let us read this definition. Retting is a process employing the action of microorganisms and moisture on plants to dissolve or rot away much of the cellular tissues and pectin surrounding the bast fiber bundles and so facilitating the separation of the fiber from the stem. So here we can see the stem part gives us the uh, fiber. Right now here you need to understand that when I talk about bast fiber, bast is a part, okay, like you have the stem, you have a part called phloem. We're not going to go deeper into it. So just understand that we are talking about a part of the stem. Okay, so don't get confused out here. So you need to, uh, what we do is we generally soak those stems in water. Okay, for about 20 days. Now we can also just uh, use water for a softening of such stems or we can also use the action of microorganisms for softening. Okay, so that's why it can either be the action of microorganism or it can be the action of moisture by soaking it in water for nearly about 20 days. Okay, so this process actually softens the tissue. Okay, and that is why we call this process as retting and it is important for the extraction. After the process of retting, we perform the process of stripping that we were just discussing in the question. So once the uh, tissue has been softened, we remove the tissue. Okay, so we separate them from the stem. So that process is referred to as stripping. So here you can have a look at this flow chart. So first the bundle stalk, okay, the stem or the stalk, then comes retting. Then comes stripping. So sometimes they use E or I. Okay. Then comes washing, squeezing, sun dry, baling, kacha packing, and finally the storage and the transport. Right. So in exam, you need to know that for jute, we use these two terms specifically: retting process and the stripping process.
right? Then we saw nipping, okay? So it is a special cultivation practice of plucking the apical bulbs of the crop at about 30 to 40 days after sowing. Nipping stops the apical growth and promotes the lateral branching. Thus, the plants become more vigorous and produce more flowers and pods and yield per plant is increased. So basically, if you see a plant out here, right? So when we say apical bud, we are referring to the bud at the terminal part. So we may call it as terminal bud or we may call it as apical bud. Okay, so usually we pluck away these apical buds so that the plant grows instead of growing like this, the plant actually grows laterally, branches out more and lateral branching is promoted. Okay, and because of this, the yield per plant is increased. Next, we saw one another term of propping. So basically, um, this propping that we saw, the example was again, it was used both in sugarcane as well as in banana. Okay, so here in the picture, you can see sugarcane. So what they do is they are tying the leaves together, okay, using the bottom dry and green leaves. So basically, you can see here that the bottom dry and green leaves are rolled up and the leaves at the top are tied using it. Okay, so this prevents lodging. Now, what is lodging? Lodging is a term where we describe the displacement of these stems or maybe roots from their vertical and proper placement. Okay, so because now if you see these are very neatly arranged and properly balanced. So these plants would not get dislodged from the ground or their initial placement now. Okay, so because of this, this propping is performed. So you can see that there are two rows here. So uh, the two rows are also tied together. You can see that. Between two rows, the lower leaves are used and a knot is tied out here. And this kind of a process is called propping. Okay, and uh, lodging can, uh, if the plant gets displaced from its original position, you see that the yield get, gets reduced and the nutrients that they receive also gets abolished. Okay, so we need to prevent the lodging of plant and because of that, this propping is performed. Now you can see here that uh, we can see evenly spacing uh, that is done here because of it irrigation can be easily performed right and we can also see the nutrients can be uh, properly distributed between the various crops right next uh, the next thing that we are going to see uh, these are the things after uh, having a look at these uh, sections you shall be aware of the oil percentage in the field crops Okay, the protein content that is present in cereals, the protein content that is present in pulses and the protein content that is present in oil seeds. So here in this particular chart, you can see the oil percentage in various field crops. Okay, so you can see that the highest one obviously is in coconut, 60 percentage of oil, right? And you can see that soya bean is actually having a nearly about 20 percent. So if you're not able to, uh, you know, have a have in mind all these values, it's fine, but have a rough idea. Like, you know, among all these crops, you can see that coconut has the highest oil percentage. So, you know, just have a uh, maybe basic understanding, like go for groundnut because ground Groundnut is uh, uh, mostly used, right? So you just see that nearly 45% of it is oil, right? And we use groundnut oil a lot. Then this particular uh, screenshot here, protein content in cereals. So just have an idea that you can see rice, you can see has the least protein content, nearly only 6 to 7 percentage. Okay, in pulses, if you see, uh, you can see the various pulses like gram, pea, moong, cow pea, lentil, arhar, urad. So for everything, they have given the protein content. Okay, so just don't go very detailed into uh, it. But here you can see that uh, cow pea is known as vegetable meat. So this is kind of a something different term that they have used. So kindly memorize this plus just see what is the protein content that is available in cow pea. So it is nearly 23.4 percentage. Because it's not possible to uh, memorize all these things. So just I'm asking you to have a fair idea about it, right? 
uh, then you can also one thing you can um, see from here that in wheat nearly 11 to 12 percent of protein content is there and specifically gluten is available so when you you can actually get a question like gluten is associated with which of the following crops so then you can immediately mark wheat because you would have seen this picture right then in barley it is albuminoids right so these are some of the things that you can actually pick up from this particular section next we come to protein content in oil seeds okay so same you can see that groundnut had uh, so groundnut is actually nutritious we can see that oil percentage was nearly 45 percent and the protein content in it is nearly 26 percent right So with this, we have come to the end of the session today. So we have discussed two things. The first thing that uh, we were discussing uh, was regarding the various terms associated with crops like maybe retting, uh, stripping, nipping, right? So these are some of the important terms. And then we had seen about the oil content or the protein content in various crops like cereals, like pulses, oil seeds, right? So kindly just go through this lecture ample number of times so that you can actually memorize memorize them not all but have a fair idea about it if you found this video useful kindly like subscribe and share the pdf format of this particular video can be accessed from edutab's telegram channel and the link for the channel is placed on your screens till then friends thank you so much and happy learning